Hey, how's it going everybody? Thanks for joining me. Zach here with Extreme Outfitters. And today we are talking about buying your first compound bow. So this is catered to those who are looking at getting into the archery world and don't really know where to start. So we've got a whole series that we're gonna be releasing on all the different aspects of buying a bow and accessories over the next couple weeks. So if you're a new archer or somebody that's looking to get into the archery world, this video series for you. So today we're gonna to start by talking about things you need to consider when buying your first compound bow. So we're gonna walk you through the process, understand the basic terminology, and things to consider when making that initial purchase. So let's go ahead and get started. We know choosing your first compound bow can be overwhelming. It was for me. I started a little bit later, and that was one of the reasons for me doing what I've done with my shop is I wanted to provide a place that provides a comfortable atmosphere for those who have never been into archery or starting late, a place for them to come and get educated and learn about things and make a well-informed decision. And same thing with all this stuff that we release on our YouTube channel. The whole goal is to provide valuable information for those that are looking to get into the game, learn about new products, and just overall reviews and information on all things archery, outdoors, and hunting. So, we're gonna break down the things you need to consider when buying your first compound bow. But before we do that, let's go ahead and define what a compound bow even is. So, if you look at this thing, there's a lot of moving parts, right? A compound bow is a modern bow, it's, which is typically used for target archery or hunting. Um, it's completely different than your traditional bows, your recurve or takedown, or long bows, excuse me, as, you look at it, we've got strings, we've got cables, we've got risers, we've got cams. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts compared to the traditional stuff, which is typically very simplistic. Stick and string for a lot of them, right? All the features and components of a compound bow are designed to allow for greater accuracy, especially at the distance, more power and consistency when shooting these bows, but this is all based off your skill level and capability, right? This, the equipment is there, you've just gotta be able to use it. So let's get started. Let's go over the main components and features that make up a compound bow. So initially right out of the gate, you'll see we've got our riser. So our riser is the central part of the bow. It's gonna be where you mount and attach all of your accessories. It's got your grip, it's got your shelf. It's the main part of the bow. Typically your risers are either carbon or aluminum. So when you go that carbon route, you're looking at your high-end, high-dollar bows. Those are gonna be typically the lighter bows, but they come with a price tag on them. Next, we've got our limbs. You're gonna have limbs on the top and bottom of your bows. These are what transfer the energy generated when you draw the bow back. So typically, you've got a set on the top, you've got a set on the bottom, and depending on the manufacturer, you may have one limb top and bottom, you may have two, and Matthew's bow, you've got eight. So it really depends on the bow and the manufacturer, how many limbs come on this thing. Some good terminology to know is your ATA or your axle to axle. So that's the length of the bow from your axle to axle. That's just a measurement we take when we look at overall length of the bow. You notice we got our string. This is our bow string. We've got our cables. Our string is what you actually attach your arrow to and knock it right here in the center. And what you draw back, your cables are gonna be attached to your cams. From there, we've got our cable guard. Our cable guard is a component that holds the cables out of the way of the arrow's path. Then on your top and bottom, you'll notice we've also got our cam. So compound bows, bows either come with one or two cams. This is a prime bow right here. This has got a cam on the top and bottom. The cam helps to reduce the force required to hold the bow at full draw and provides your let off at full draw, which is where the archer needs to exert less force to keep the bow drawn back. Typically your hunting bows come with 80 to 90% let off while your target bows come anywhere from 60 to 80%. So this is also where you are going to adjust your draw length in your bow, is in the cam system. And typically it's done by a mod system. So some bows have what are called rotating mods. So all it is is you adjust the draw length by adjusting that one particular mod, it'll rotate to accommodate the different draw lengths. And then other bows you have are mod specific, like the Prime bows this year, the RevX series, and the Matthews bows. So each mod provides either a different draw length, or in Matthews case, even a draw length and poundage adjustment. And then you have other bows that require a complete cam change in order to 
change the draw length of the bow. So these are things you need to consider when buying your bow is, will it even accommodate my draw length? On the back of the string here, you would notice we have our D-loop. Uh, this is just a piece of material that is tied to the bow string. It's where you knock your arrow in between and it's where you attach your release in order to draw this bow back. So then we've got our brace height. That is the distance from the throat of the gear up to the bowstring. This affects the performance of the bow. Typically, the shorter the brace height, the faster that bow is gonna be, but also the less forgiving. So those are things you need to consider as well when going to buy a bow is not over only overall length, but the brace height. Because like I said, a shorter brace height is typically a more aggressive, a faster bow. But when you get a little bit longer brace height, you have a typically a more forgiving bow, a little bit more, a bow that's a little easier to shoot for, especially for beginners. And then you have to look at your draw weight of a bow. So majority of your bows are gonna have um, the ability to change the draw weight based off the limb bolts. You can back those out and turn that bow either down or up, depending on the manufacturer. Uh, some bows have adjustments from seven all the way to 70 pounds, but when you get into your flagship bows or your high-end high bows, you typically have about a 10 pound increment of adjustment depending on the manufacturer. Matthews, again, they have a really awesome mod system where you can change the draw length without having to back down the limbs, but actually just putting a mod on that bow to change the overall draw length and draw weight. It's an incredible um, system that they've come out. It's called their switch weight technology. So we're big fans of that with the Matthews bows. It's very, very important that you know that these compound bows are highly customizable and adjustable. When you go to buy a compound bow, even if you were to walk in, grab a bow off the shelf and take it home, it's not something you can just start shooting. They have got to be set up to the individual, set up, tuned, and fitted to that individual. That's why it's, we preach and it's so important that you go to a real archery shop or pro shop that has techs on staff that can really walk you through the process get you fitted and get you set up correctly on that bow for not only your safety, but so you can get the most performance possible out of that bow. All right, so we've covered the different parts of some of the in some of the different bow lingo. Now we need to determine the reason you're actually buying this bow, right? Are you just someone that wants to do some shooting in your backyard? Do you want to get into target archery specifically? Are you looking to be a bow hunter or are you looking to do a combination of everything? So let's discuss the differences. So a hunting bow, typically hunting bows are designed primarily for just that, right? Hunting, they need to be compact. They need to be a little bit lighter. They need to be quiet in, uh, in order to avoid scaring away game. And they are built for mobility if, and ease of use in the outdoors, right? Navigating the woods, you don't want something that's too big and cumbersome, that's getting hung up, banging around on trees, is loud and obnoxious. You'll never have a successful hunt with that. While target bows are specifically designed for precision shooting in target archery competitions. So they prioritize accuracy, consistency over all other factors, right? They're usually longer overall and typically come in your brighter, more flashy colors. So let's say you're looking to do both hunting, some target shooting, maybe some local 3D competitions. You may wanna go with more of a hybrid option, right? Something that's not too long, but something that's also not too short. Something that's gonna provide you the ability to do both well. And for us, we see a lot of guys who only have one bow that prefer a little bit, that in between ATA or axle to axle, 32 to 34 inch ATA really provides a more forgiving shot experience and is an overall very stable platform that can really do both well. Now that we've gone over the features and we established why you wanna buy the bow, what your particular application is, next we have to figure out a budget, right? So it's important to have a general idea when you walk into a, a bow shop to kind of have an idea of what your budget is to spend on that bow. So, and one of the ways that to really determine that is, are you someone who knows that when you get into a hobby, you're all in, you, you want to top the line everything, you know that you're going to be in this thing for the long haul, so you wanna take that buy once, cry once approach. If that's you and you know that you're looking for top of the line gear, equipment, and accessories, a flagship bow is probably the best bet for you. So a flagship bow has all the latest technology, superior materials and engineering is to the highest standard, which really provides a more consistent and repeatable bow, as well as a more tunable bow. If you're not 
that invested, you're somebody that just kind of wants to dabble, kind of get your feet wet, get a feel for it, flagship might not be the best bet for you. You may want to start with more of a price point bow. Your flagship price point typically starts right at $1,000 for just the bow. We're not talking accessories, arrows, releases, or any of that. That's just the bow. While your mid price point bows typically are between $500 and $1,000. Uh, and this price point really ensures that you're not getting junk, right? When you go in to especially some of the big box stores and you spend a couple hundred bucks on a bow, that bow doesn't hold a tune, doesn't tune well, is way too adjustable, and it comes with just really subpar equipment and the accessories that it provides just really aren't very good quality. So you're, it's, it's got more of a toy feel for it than it does anything, right? So that price point really ensures that you're getting into something that's decent quality and gonna be able to do what you want it to do. It's gonna tune, we can set it up and make it accommodate and fit you like it's supposed to. The great thing about a lot of the mid price point bows is that you can buy them in a package setup. So that takes a lot of the accessory half choosing and having to go through and pick out every addition on the bow, it, it eliminates that. You get what you get and you get some pretty decent accessories right out of the gate that are gonna do exactly what you need them to do. So it takes away a lot of that additional expense for one and then that overwhelming feeling of, oh man, I've gotta pick out every single piece of this bow and custom build this bow. That's the great thing about some of the mid price point bows is that the packages that they come with. It's really a great option for those that are looking to get into and dabble into the archery world. So remember, even though if you were to walk in, pick a bow up off a shelf and walk out, it's, it's not going to work for you. These bows must be set up, tuned, and fitted to you. So don't think you can just order one online and start shooting. It's very, very important that you take it to someone that knows their way around bows or your local shop to have them set it up correctly, tune it, set it up to fit you, your draw length, get all your measurements, so that whenever you take this bow out and you start shooting, you actually are able to hit what you're aiming at. So we highly encourage you, even if you order a bow offline, take it to your local pro shop and let them help you out. So once you've established your budget, make your way into a shop, right? So when you go into a shop, the first thing that should get done after you've kind of kind of walked around the store is you need to get measured. And you can even do this at your house before you go into a shop. So compound bows are set up specifically for the individual buying them. That's why you have to get measure, measured. So everybody is different and the fit for each bow is dependent on the individual themselves. So the bow setup can vary depending on your draw length, your, the weight that you're, the amount of weight that you're able to draw and your facial structure for peep alignment. So what we do in order to get your draw length or a starting point for your draw length is we measure your wingspan. So we're talking fingertip to fingertip. So we take that number and then we divide it by 2.5 and that gives us a rough start for where your draw length should be. It's gonna be somewhere in that range and it could vary depending on the manufacturer of the bow one way or the other a little bit, typically about a half inch. All right, so we've got your measurements done. We've gone over all the bow lingo. Now the fun really begins. So once you've established that budget, we've got your measurement. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take every bow on our shelf here at Extreme Outfitters, and we're gonna put it in your hand. We're gonna set it up for you, put it in your hand, and encourage you to shoot all of them. This is really gonna give you the ability to feel the different draw cycles, the grips, the overall feel of each of the bows to really make a well-informed decision. We get a lot of people that come in, they're like, my best friend told me this is the bow I need, this is the manufacturer, this is the end-all be-all. And while it is probably a great manufacturer, it may not be the best bow choice for you. Everybody is different. That's why we are so big here in our shop at encouraging you to come in with an open mind. Forget the brands. Just pick the bows up that we put in your hands and shoot them and get a feel for yourself to really develop that, your own opinion on the bow and what feels and fits you best. The other reason it's so important that we, you test drive any of these bows, which is something we really encourage, we encourage you to, even though you know you have a bow in mind that this is the bow I want, we really encourage you to shoot it just to make sure that that bow does fit you because we wanna look at to make sure that our measurements are correct, that that draw length that you measured for is actually correct it, on that bow. We might have to make an adjustments on there. And we also wanna make sure you're not over bowed, right? So we wanna make sure that the bow is not too hard for you to draw so that it's not a fun shooting experience. We see some guys who are new to it 
um, that come in and they, they, right away they want a 70 pound bow, which is great. They're more than capable to, but they've never drawn a bone before, bow back before. So they don't really have the technique down to draw that bow correctly and they fatigue really fast or they end up hurting themselves. So that's why it's important you go in and have a tech work with you, show you the process and how you draw the bow back, how you grip the bow, how you anchor, so that whenever you, it's time for you to start shooting, you have a basic understanding so we can make sure that bow is set up correctly and it's enjoyable for you to shoot. If a bow is not set up correctly, if your draw length is way too long, it also can lead to you slapping your arm with the string, which was gonna leave a really big knot. It's, it can be incredibly painful um, and it leaves a bad taste in your mouth right out of the gate. Once you've spent some time behind some of the different bows, it's going to give you an overall idea of what really suits you and it's gonna help you in making that informed decision for that big first purchase. And there you have it guys. So for all of our new guys and girls that are looking at getting into the archery world, those are some of the basic things you need to consider when buying your first bow. I know there's a lot, but I hope this video was very helpful. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, drop them in the uh, comment box below or feel free to reach out, us, reach out to us here at the shop at Extreme Outfitters. We're open seven days a week. We always have techs on staff that can walk you through the process or give you some helpful insight. And if you're local, here near Jacksonville, North Carolina. Like I said, we're open seven days a week. All of the bows that we have on the wall, we carry PSE, Prime, Bowtech, Hoyt, and Matthews. Come on in, get behind some of these bows and get a different feel for them. You know, we really encourage you to shop at your local dealer, whoever's closest to you, so you can walk in and get a feel for the bow and make that the right decision for the right bow for you. So whether you're drawn to target shooting, 3D archery, you just wanna go do some shooting in the backyard or you wanna do it all or primarily hunt, uh, we've covered just about everything. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your buddies. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel um, just so you never miss out on some of our tips, gear reviews, product reviews. We've got a lot going on. We have a lot of videos dropping. And stay tuned for the rest of this series that's gonna be dropping over the next couple weeks from choosing your sights to your arrows to your releases. We're gonna be covering it all. And of course, a massive thank you for joining me today. As always, we really appreciate you guys following along and we appreciate all of your support. It's been a pleasure to walk you through the world of compound bows and give you some tips on buying your first bow. So as always, we really appreciate you guys and we'll see you guys in the next video.